Very good evening, everyone. Good evening, Roshali. Good evening, Dr. Praveen. Good evening, Good evening. Very nice. All the very best. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. We were just waiting for you to join. Yes. And um, it's a wonderful, wonderful day. And uh, should we say welcome on the eve of uh, Animal Day. Animal Animal Day. Day. Animal Day. Yes. So uh, as NGH sets new traditions every now and then, we are setting a tradition that when everybody is going to uh, be celebrating Animal Day tomorrow, we are starting the celebrations today. So I wish you... Leading the celebrations, yes? <laughs> yes, absolutely, absolutely. And um, um, keeping true to the NJH tradition, we are um, celebrating Hanuman Day with sharing knowledge. What better gift can we give to each other than share knowledge and share our experiences? Um, so it gives me immense pleasure that um, we are continuing these NGH webinars uh, in our second season, wherein earlier we were doing it twice a week. But as you can see, um, most of us are sitting in our clinics today. Most of us are busy with our everyday life. That is why we have reduced the frequency of webinar, but we've added one more thing and we've started roundtable conferences on every fourth Saturday. And we are bringing the NGH webinars on second Saturday. So we are still so, meeting twice a month. We are still meeting twice a month. Okay? Yes, Don't say absolutely. we are saying that all. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So ma'am, um, would you like to say a few words? You have, I, I think this is a wonderful uh, setup. And I really enjoy the webinar so much. And I want to say, I know Vishali will say a lot, but I want to say something about NGH. And that is that it has always been there for you. Now we are on our, what year? We are going to be celebrating our 30th year. So, you know, we've just been around forever, I think so. And we've never given anybody any heartaches, except sometimes issues not reaching. But if they tell us, we always send it. If they don't tell us, we can't do anything. So that is the best part about NGA, that we are there and we uh, never disappoint anybody. Unless they, and we cannot know that we don't disappoint unless they tell us. So please people tell us about your disappointment and tell us if you have any problem with it. Don't assume that we know, we can't know unless you tell us. Okay, so tell us, we don't mind criticism. We love in fact uh, criticism, please tell us. And uh, just be with us all the time on all our various activities, which she will tell you. And uh, can I say something? Rushali, before you about Praveen Kumar. Yes, yes, ma'am, please, please go ahead. So um, about Praveen Kumar, what can I say? He's been with us from the very beginning and the inception. I think he is the youngest of our group and the most handsome of our group, okay? So, you know, I must tell you this story that I went to his son's wedding and I asked him who is the bridegroom because he and his son looked very similar, which was just a few years ago, not very long ago. So, and he's the most popular also, I must tell you that. he Everybody comes and listens to him this week itself. He has some two, three webinars. So, yeah, you can see how popular he is. And uh, he is uh, popular very much for his way of presenting his humor which he brings into it so that everything is much easier to grasp and today's topic is like that about fever which all of us love and want so we will learn a lot and we'll not find it so difficult because he'll give it in his usual light way so Rishali don't tell me I took all your things you have more to say okay <laughs> Man, uh, it's wonderful that you know you have said everything and now I'm left with nothing <laughs> but you know uh, that's 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 the beauty of um, homeopathy and to moreover that's the beauty of uh, Praveen sir I would say that he has so many facets so many features so many qualities that every single time that I have been meeting him for last 
12 or 13 years wherein I've been uh, actively involved with NJH editorial board, I have learned at least one new aspect about him and that quality has helped me to grow personally. So I think I'm just going to stop myself from giving a very formal introduction to Praveen sir. I hope that's okay for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you know, uh, already you are so much known. We know that you have been a principal of a college and you have been an ardent teacher. That is the precise reason why you are teaching so many, at, uh, you know, speaking at so many events in this week. So, a teacher from heart and a very passionate homeopath. And as ma'am has already said that, you know, whenever we talk about Praveen sir, it was, it is really hard to believe that he has spent so many years in homeopathy when you just simply look at it, look at him. But believe me, my friends, when he starts talking, you will know that he means his work and there is so much which we can learn from you. So I will not be amongst, I will not be between you and Praveen sir. Sir, I give you the stage. Uh, you can start sharing and keep giving us more hope and lot of wisdom which you always bring about. Thank you, Dr. Vishpala. Thank you, Dr. Rushali. And thanks to all NGH family members. In fact, uh, I should tell you, I was telling Dr. Vishpala the other day, on Wednesday, precisely, the Thursday rather, uh, she was asking between two seminars, like there was one more, and our NJH. Now, where are you? She asked me, I said, of course I am with NJH. The other one is my secondary. That is not my primary choice. So I give full, I give full importance to NJH because I have been associated with this since Sarla Benji was there. And we used to have meetings even Dr. Kafil Vijaykar used to attend those meetings in Sarla Bain's house, Vishpala's house, rather. Anyway, so we had those beautiful moments. That is called Sarla Bain's house even today, okay? Even though my clinic is now there, but it is called only Sarla Bain's movie, not my house. Well, that's all. So that's how this is the companionship or this is the bondage between NJH and the ourselves, and we are growing from strength to strength, whether it is in terms of life members or in terms of readers or in terms of anything like the editorial board members, lovers, to call it as lovers of NJH, it has grown from by leaps and bounds. So that's a welcoming spot, a point. And uh, as they were telling to a lot about uh, my witty nature and all that, I tell you one thing, when do we become witty? Then we don't know the answer. <laughs> so that's very modest, it. sir. Very modest. <laughs> so that's what like when you don't answer. Like George Bernard sir once was asked by an English actress, Dr. Shah, we should both get married. The child will get my beauty and your intelligence. <laughs> You actually said, I am afraid if it is in reverse. <laughs> so, Pascal is a ready mate. He could not answer in a different way. So, that's what like laughter is the best medicine. We can enjoy. Anyway, jokes apart, all those things. Today's topic, as Dr. Vishpala was telling, fever. I get fever now before I talk to you about fever. Fever is such a common complaint, symptom, disease, syndrome, complex. Most of the times, we are successful without knowing anything. Empirically, we give. The patient comes, you take few symptoms, you give routinely, the patient is all right. But when once the patient comes back and tells he is not better, or the parents come back, and tell that they are not better. Then comes the question, where did you go wrong? So, Hanuman told very clearly that every case is unique. Every case is different from the other case. You can't, except 
there is epidemics where genus epidemicus has to be selected you have to give because it is a large number of cases that apart it's very important for us to be very vigilant careful even with fever because fever can be a symptom in many many serious illnesses or it can be a serious disease by itself so let us go ahead with my presentation can i share with vrushali uh, yes sir right so as dr vrushali was telling and vishpana was telling like we have already started the celebrations in fact in delhi ccrh has already started today so the celebrations have started we are also part of the celebrations committee here so we are celebrating the masters birthday sentinel and more than that so now with all heartfelt salutations to our master and best wishes from our dhf and ndh we'll proceed with homeopathic management of fever so when once we encounter with fever we get lots of doubts how we should approach a case of fever what should we do in a case of fever what it comprises and there will be a problem initially we will not think it but think from an angle of a neophyte for a neophyte whether it is a cancer or a fever it looks same because it is a big heap of symptoms patient or patient attendant comes and then they start telling all the symptoms so how do we approach in these cases they of course i will not try to teach you all the fundamentals and basics it would take hours and hours though vrushali said i am a teacher or dentist like not so i am not a so but anyway i may i'm just a teacher i would love to teach but not in the same way what i used to teach in the class so what should we do how we approach that's what my aim today i will tell you i tell you show you two simple cases very short cases 30 year old army man when i was staying in baby hostel during my second year of dhms in 1978 so you can think i how old am i vishpala said he looks young he looks all that now you know what could be my age anyway right now i have been fever since 3 days okay my teacher who was practicing allopathy at that time now he is practicing homeopathy bumper practice so he gave him some injection some tablets we were not aware of them there was no relief so this army man forcibly said what bukaria right? don't lie down come on get up he took him took him out i was objecting are you are chhod do no he took him out had both of them to be as each my friend became all right temporarily the, the moment he came back to the room he was looking normal no fear nothing what do we do what do we understand to be as if they can cure fever probably every physician will carry beer bottles in his clinic so better a specific characteristic feature in this but if i got back the fever then my teacher other teacher not this gentleman other teacher who practices classical homeopathy he gave veretram album to her he was relieved by beer only one drug that we came to know later at that time we broke our head veretram album i really teased my classmate i said are you pagal ho usi liye veretram album de diye you are maniacal so he could not understand why veretram album because he told him for take veretram album 201 dose he could not believe to take or not to take then i said our teacher come on take it trust him so he took one dose he became completely all right profuse sweat became completely all right this is one case we'll discuss this later in a brief manner later second case this is about me only my classmate and now my about me don't think i am talking about all my family members my friends in the fever chapter so during dasa vacation in third year i was at home i developed high fever it was touching almost 105 no we don't like to be home dr pranil 
that's why that is one rule. <laughs> so no symptoms, other symptoms except high fever. My mommy touched my neck and said, "Hi, it is so high." Then she checked with the thermometer. It was hundred and five. But I said, uh, she said, "What do you want to eat?" I said, "Bread." My mommy hates, but I ate thirteen slices of bread. I wouldn't have eaten thirteen slices in my whole lifetime till then. <laughs> but I ate thirteen slices of bread on that day. What do you think of? What would be my drive? Probably somebody would tell. So I contacted my teacher. He said, "Take phosphorus, two hundred one dose." I became all right with that. One dose, profuse perspiration, energy came back. I became no. I enjoyed all my dasa vacation at that. So these two cases would tell us in a different manner. What what do they tell us? We should be very vigilant, careful, catch those characteristic features in just a common situation. Fever, cover, array, sab ko aata hai yar. Aaj kal you go to any doctor, they say viral, viral. That just like viral videos, viral fever, viral, viral. Everybody tells viral. If you don't understand anything, you tell viral. So that's how it happens. But even in this scenario where We get common symptoms. We should be able to catch one classical spot, one beautiful characteristic. If we can, then we will be able to do everything justice there. Now, we will go to little theory about fever. We all know thermoregulation is maintained by controlled by hypothalamus. It gets two types of signals: one from the skin and one. From the region itself through the blood, so these two signals will tell the hypothalamus how much it has to maintain thermoregulation. Like for example, we all have refrigerator. There is a thermostat and a thermoregulatory mechanism in the refrigerator. It doesn't work continuously. When it becomes like higher than the temperature which is set for, then immediately it switches on and then it reduces. The temperature. That's how hypothalamus is like that thermal regulation. The normal body temperature it is maintained despite any environmental variation. Nowadays, outside temperature will be 43, 44, 45, scorching heat. But hypothalamic thermal regulatory center it balances everything. Takes the heat production from metabolic activity, from muscle, liver, and heat dissipation from the skin and lungs. So it balances and maintains the body temperature. We don't know what is happening, but it takes care of that. So in a neutral temperature environment, the human metabolic rate produces more heat than it is necessary to maintain the core body. Now, maximum normal oral normal temperature is 98.9 degrees Fahrenheit at 6 a.m. And if you see the diurnal variation, 4 p.m. it is 99.9 degrees. If in the clinic, in the clinic, the patient comes and you have checked, and it is just 100, don't bother much. I heard from a great general physician, great general physician in Hyderabad. He said, till 100 degrees Fahrenheit, don't treat a fever case. If he insists, give him a B-complex capsule. So even not paracetamol. So that's how. That's what, like, we have to keep in our mind. There is a diurnal variation, and the normal temperature it varies a little. So, what is the fever definition? If in the morning temperature is about ninety-eight point nine degrees Fahrenheit, and in the evening if it is ninety-nine point nine degrees Fahrenheit, then consider it as fever, and then take care what to do. Don't be in panic. And we know oral. Thermometer reading, we always do that. Most often, we used to do earlier. Nowadays, of course, auxiliary. And this is little lower because of the mouth breathing, and which is a common factor in respiratory infections and rapid breathing and all. The common in children, as it is shown in the picture, auxiliary thermometer reading is more important. And nowadays, in the malls, what are they doing? They just check on your hand, dorsal of the hand, or on the forehead. 
the thermometer is just wave there and they record the temperature whether they really do it or not but formality is being done there rectal temperature is slightly higher around 1.7 degrees fahrenheit higher than oral readings and in women when they are menstruating the aim temperature is generally lower in the two weeks before ovulation but in, it rises by 1 degree fahrenheit with ovulation and body temperature will be maintained 1 degree above after ovulation till menses occur and body temperature can also be elevated after you eat something postpartum pregnancy and endocrine dysfunctions also affect body temperature now i am giving you the gist of all this because it's a big chapter if you open harrison's internal medicine also lots of things being discussed about fever but i am not going into details of all that just to to refresh your memory i know the viewers here in the webinar are all doctors okay so etiology it could be infectious it could be inflammatory it could be oncologic or other like cns dysfunction drug fever and there could be some life threatening conditions as well now if you see infectious it could be systemic like bacteria sepsis meningitis endocarditis or respiratory it could be upper respiratory tract infection sinusitis otitis media pharyngitis pneumonia bronchiolitis abdominal uti common abscess is very other important thing which usually hides and you will be difficult it will be difficult to diagnose it also bone or joint infections or it can be hardware infection what is the software hardware it is not the hardware here but the hardware means central line which is connected here or a vp shunt or a g tube they can cause infections then if you come to inflammatory diseases the like kawasaki disease which comes in the infants usually or general inflammatory arthritis lupus inflammatory bowel disease or hsp then others like cns dysfunction drug fever drug fever is a very important aspect we will talk about that later i will also show you a case now some of the life threatening conditions which can also have fever so fever when it comes we should also keep in our mind there is a saying in english that if you don't have in your mind you can't see it also so we have to keep all this information in our mind so that we will be able to scan the patient completely with our mind see he is not into this life threatening condition he is not into this so he is probably falling into this category that's very important for us sepsis febrile neutropenia or hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis or malignant hyperthermia malignant hyperthermia anything malignant malignant is uncontrollable beyond your limit Like if you read Rodana Solidus in Allen's keynote, malignant jaundice. It is given there. It doesn't mean that high abdominal cellular carcinoma giving jaundice is Rodana Solidus. No. So malignant is uncontrollable, very high. So here malignant hyperthermia. Then the fever symptoms. Fever itself is a symptom, but fever can also produce certain symptomatology because rise of temperature, which is already there in the body it will not just go alone it can produce general malaise lethargy anorexia loss of appetite sleepiness is always sleepy body pain i used to see my father when he used to fall sick with fever he never used to get up from the bed nor even taking food or anything just and we were all feeling like he was called as a tiger in the house so in the vicinity also in the locality and the family so we never used to talk to him silent sleeping 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 then after two days he used to become alright so body pains inability to concentrate headache burning in eyes weakness dizziness heavy eyes muscular weakness lack of energy or tired lack of interest drowsiness shivering or chilliness sweating and confusion in the hallucinations with high fever which are common Now, if you see the classification in the grade wise low grade under 2 on 2 102 moderate 102 to 104 high grade 104 to 106 hyperpyrexia more than 106 so these figures i am talking of fahrenheit only because most of us follow fahrenheit temperature right now i was talking to you about hyperpyrexia It is a very dangerous condition 
we have to be careful very careful hyper means increased pyrexia means fever in the condition where the body temperature goes above 106.7 degrees fahrenheit due to changes in the hypothalamus here most important high fever due to changes in the hypothalamus hypothalamus is a thermo regulatory center that has changed its thermo regulation like a pain threshold what we call it. most of the ladies do have higher pain threshold when compared to men somebody was telling like during labor pains the pain threshold level is so high which we cannot imagine so such threshold that level here hypothalamus has a thermo regulatory level keeps the temperature at 98.6 degrees fahrenheit now it has risen its level to 106 so it has raised itself it's a very life threatening emergency and it demands urgent medical attention if needed admit him in an institute don't take risk give medicine see that it acts immediately if you are very careful and confident otherwise shift him to an institute don't take risk and without prompt proper treatment hyperpyrexia can lead to long term complications and even death then hyperthermia is the difference between hyperpyrexia and hyperthermia in these hot weather is like when the temperature touches 48 49 degrees the body temperature also goes up but here the thermo regulatory center hypothalamus is not affected it is still intact it is doing its work it's a momentary rise of temperature due to some high ambient temperature it's a very hot weather so it's a temporary phenomenon hyperthermia is not life threatening it is not very dangerous then there is one condition puo now i will tell you reveal the whole secret of my life first defined in 1961 this is my year of birth so i was born not with puo but puo was also born along with me fever above 100 degrees fahrenheit which awaits diagnosis for at least 3 weeks including one week investigation in hospital now one word of caution this is ever changing in the medical parlance the causes the definition the factors and one textbook was telling very clearly that three fourths of puo cases are not properly understood not properly investigated otherwise you would get the reason behind puo it is unknown it is not unknown it is definitely seen if i draw the simile all my homeopathic friends would agree with me that in textbook of argonon it is clearly mentioned that the cases where less or the uh, diseases with few symptoms it is given as they are one sided disorders they are not exactly one sided many cases of one sided disorders are not explored or understood properly similarly here puo cases are also not investigated properly yet puo still holds good causes it could be infective inflammatory neoplastic miscellaneous then all the investigations including a child may have to be done in these patients and you have to understand clearly whether the definition of puo is fitting into it or you need to investigate further and find the cause for it now there are basically three types of fevers basically intermittent remittent continuous according to clinical methods elevated temperature is present only for some hours of the day in intermittent fever and becomes normal for remaining hours so mostly in 24 hours time if you see if you ask the patient to take the temperature chart the temperature would have touched normal for quite a few hours like malaria kalaza pyemia or septicemia in cases of malaria they may be fever with like 24 hours pattern 48 hours power pattern 72 hours pattern so it is a clinical history we can take them they may be difficult to be understood a case of a traveler because 
they give a different type of thing when they travel from. Now, remittent fever, where in the intermittent fever, it touches normal in 24 hours time. In remittent, it does not touch normal. It is always above normal throughout the day and fluctuates more than one degree centigrade in 24 hours. So more than one and a half degree Fahrenheit in 24 hours, like infective endocarditis. Continuous fever, it remains above normal throughout the day and does not fluctuate more than one degree. The fluctuation is not much. Like for example, in remittent, the fluctuation it comes down and goes up, comes down and goes up. But even that touching down will not touch the baseline. This continuous fever, it is fluctuating, but not more than one degree centigrade in 24 hours. Like lobar pneumonia, typhoid, UTI, brucellosis, or typhus. Now, in the case of fever, we have to keep in our mind physical examination is compulsory. I'll tell you to my neophyte friends or young doctors, it's always important for you to do the physical examination of any patient. Don't ever forget your basic fundamentals. Don't ever think that you just take the case, do the repatriation and give the medicine, it will work. No, you have to be careful, examine the patient. Very important. Pulse, temperature, respiratory system, CBS, neurological, GIT, GUT, female genitalia, search for any focus of infection, injury or skin lesions. These to be brought in, kept in our mind, when a patient with fever comes, what is the relevant examination needed in this case? So that examination has to be conducted on that particular patient. We can't forget this physical examination. Then the lab investigation, not every patient of fever needs lab investigations. Some of the cases you can diagnose clinically, but some of the cases, like for example, nowadays, if you are feeling that it is a viral infection, you don't need to, but even the pandemic is also a viral infection. So you need to do that. Whenever you suspect, you need to do the infection uh, investigations. Complete hemogram is very important. Then depending on the science history, you may need to go for some other things like blood culture, stool examination and culture, urine examination and culture, throat swab, peripheral blood smear, sputum for AFB, chest x-ray, very important, CSF tap and culture, in especially children who have the fever and meningitis because they may not allow you to touch that meningism or meningeal signs if they are there. You need to do the CSF tap and culture. USG, very important. If somebody is having any problem and special blood tests like TB gold or ANA or RA factor, ASO titer, creatinine kinase, liver function test. I tell you one more important thing. In few of the cases, I do remember there were quite a few cases rather where the fever was not properly diagnosed. And I asked classically three morning samples, three consecutive days morning samples of urine for AAP. And it was positive in 75% of cases which I sent for this test. So that also is to be born in the cases where you are not able, as I was talking to you about PUO, don't just brand as PUO. Try to see all the investigations being done and then do that. Then general management. General management, rest in well-ventilated room, sponging with tepid water, hydration. I tell you, one day I had high fever 106 in my hostel, my classmate, Dr. Sharvinder Reddy, he, he saw, checked my, because the moment I got up, there was high fever, and he checked it. He checked with the thermometer, he was brushing his teeth, keeping more, brushing his mouth, and he checked my temperature, and he said, he did not talk anything, he threw the brush on the table, he ran into the bathroom, brought bucket full of water, and he took my own bunion, which was getting dried on the thread. So he took it out, he dipped into that water, and he gave me almost bath on my bed itself. I said, kya ho ra, yaar? Kya ho ra, kya ho ra? I took to bed. So he said, to bed. So that's what, like, he was getting in, uh, very anxious. He was in jitters. I didn't have any serious symptoms. 
So the later on, the case was only taken and it was diagnosed to be malaria. And at that point of time, my teacher, he gave me Natramur 0 by 1. Touch wood, till now, I never had attack of malaria again. Never. Since 1979, I believe. So till date, 21 plus 22, 43 years, I never had malaria. So thanks to Natramur. So that's how like sponging with tepid water is very essential to bring down the temperature cool the skin surface. Then hydration, very important because when the temperature comes down, it pours out a lot of sweat. So the water balance is more important and electrolyte imbalance also has to be taken care of and we have to manage that electrolyte balance. Now we will come to homeopathic management. That was basic understanding of fever from clinical medicine point of view. Now homeopathically, what is different? Fever is a fever, whether it is homeopathy, allopathy, ayurveda, you know, nothing, everything. But fever can be acute or chronic from homeopathic standpoint. But there are acute fevers and chronic fevers. I'll show you a case of chronic fever also. The approach depends on the type of fever, obviously. Acute totality has to be erected in acute. And chronic, we have to take the whole lot of characteristic features, constitutional features, everything. So that's how we erect the totality, then select the remedy, repertorize and select the remedy. If you see in Argonon, 235 for the onwards, and one dealt with different types of fevers, especially intermittent fevers. And for example, just 235. Here, one important point I was highlighting there. What is said, three types of that cold stage, heat stage, sweat stage. There may be cold heat or heat cold. Maybe. Or it can be cold, heat, sweat. He himself mentioned in 235 aphorism very clearly that these stages are very important in intermittent fever. We have to definitely give weightage to them what happened during chill, what happened during fever, what happened during sweat. All these things have to be understood and extracted from the patient. And he also mentioned well-proved remedies, usually not anti -sorics. He had that understanding. Then he also said, if you give correct medicine, fine. But otherwise, select a similar remedy, which has at least correspond, homeopathically as possible as, similar to the strongest and most characteristic of successive states. Means, here itself he has given clear guidelines, how do we treat a fever case, whether in chill case, chill stage or heat stage or sweating stage, if you are able to find some strong characteristic feature, then you will be able to select a right remedy. This is very important. So, the ticket by ticket, most of the times what we do, whether we are in a hurry or we think we know everything, what happens? When the patient is trying to tell something, Sir, Mujhe chills si yaha, ye back se aata hai. Aray, thik hai, mein back se aata hai, friend se aata hai, us mein kuch nahi. Aray, your student would tell, Sir, jalsi mein has got chills starting from the back. Oh, right. So that's how. Heat starting from the back, different drug. So every characteristic feature in these three stages, if they are there or two stages, whatever they are, they are very important. If you can match at least, at least correspond. That's what in this 235 aphorism he mentioned very clearly, which we have to bear in our mind while treating a case of fever. And he also said intermittent fevers are four types, sporadic or epidemic, epidemics in non-marshy districts, pernicious intermittent, pernicious means dangerous. So the dangerous intermittent fevers, and endemic in marshy districts. Endemic, where you are living in a marshy area and it happens. I'll tell you one thing. My own uncle he used to stay in a place which is very close to Musi Kena. It is not a river. It is all like dirty drainage water. And his fever was not subsiding. For almost one and a half months, he suffered with fever. You may ask me a question. Why didn't he suffer earlier when he shifted there? 
but God only knows. It depends. It took some time for him to develop. And when once he was getting that, so I gave him malaria no sore one dose. It helped him to recover completely from that type of frequent recurrent fevers. Even not only that fever of one and a half months duration, frequent recurrent types of fevers, intermittently he was getting off it. He put a full stop to that. So that area where he was exposed to mosquitoes, plenty of mosquitoes. People used to cut jokes. When you are talking, keep a mask at the time only, before pandemic. Keep a mask or keep mouth covered, otherwise at least 25 mosquitoes will enter into your mouth. So that's how it used to be. So we have to be. So that location also very important. I haven't mentioned endemic in marshy districts. When the medicine, when should it be administered in case of intermittent fevers? Hanuman said like during stages, um, at the end of termination of paroxysm. And it may not be possible. It is difficult nowadays. The baby is brought with 104 degrees Fahrenheit and you tell the mother or father, give this medicine when once sweating starts, the father would look at you. If the sweating starts, why should I give the medicine, sir? Sweating means fever has come up. Why should I give? Then explain to him, this is how it can be cured. You give some other medicine and tell him, this is the apt time. If epilepsic stage is lesser, then he says, immediately when it starts, uh, when the perspiration starts. That's how it is very classical. And diet for fever patient, all excess in fruit, salt, sugar, spiritual liquors have to be avoided. He mentioned very clearly, we have to read this in between lines. Excess has to be curtailed. He did not say avoid. Excess has to be curtailed. And of course, herbal tea, soups, these things, and decomposed meats or cheese, they have to be reduced, that will be, uh, cut off. And if you see the similarity in acute cases, what it is mentioned, like you have to take one word from here and put it into fever patient also. The desires of the patient should be gratified within moderate limits. So I was allowed to eat 13 slices of bread. My mother did not say, don't eat. You are like Bakasura eating 13 slices. She did not. She also knows without knowing homeopathy, okay, let him eat. Zindagi me kabhi nahi deka bread khane do. So that's what it happened. He should be kept comfortable as regards temperature. This is very important and over exams has to be avoided. Now, how do we erect the fever totality? Mostly in acute cases. In chronic cases, fever becomes one part of it and you need to take other things also into cognition. But whereas in acute conditions like chill, heat and sweat stages, all characteristics when did When did the chill start? How did it start? From which part of the body? Anything. Try to extract. Even say, thang lagta hai sa, uske baad bukar aata hai, phir baad mein pasin aata hai. Okay? One sentence. But you ask him, when did it start? How did it start? Then tell him, if you see any repertory, fever chapter, you will see a lot of description about chill, heat and sweat stages. But go through that chapter, you will understand how it can be depicted in the case history. Then associated mental and physical characters, very, very important. We have to bear in our mind how a patient behaves in every case and his physical characteristics also. Thirst, appetite, sleep. I said like appetite increased during intermittent fever. Phosphorus, I have treated one case post measles sequelae with fever coming that the patient's condition during the fever, he used to have high increased appetite. So phosphorus 0 by 1 was given in my ward, in my hospital when I was working there, in my GSPS. Then fever totality as preferred by Boga. He referred like first, take evident cause and course of the sickness down to the latest symptoms. How it started, how is the latest symptom, including causative modalities. Like he drenched in rain and started, and now it is continuous. So that drenched in rain also is very important, causative modality. Then second the modalities, how the fever is increasing, decreasing, chill, heat, sweating, everything. 
Then third, general sensation and pathology. The generalities should not be forgotten. And lastly, to location, anything in pertaining to any particular location. Then, of course, adequate importance should be given to mind. Bogar mentioned very clearly. If you see BBCR, there is a fever chapter also. So we have to be careful in that. Then I'll take one case, case number three. Man is 34 years, came with history of fever. Fever started with chills, associated with severe headache all over and nausea. Fever is usually more at 1 to 2 p.m. and followed by profuse perspiration, which relieves fever. Nothing great. Except 1 to 2 p.m., everything is common. Appetite reduced, thirst moderate, hot urine, sleep reduced, covers during chill stage only. All the investigations were not. And he was treated for malaria and later for typhoid. Nothing happened. No relief. He will continue, unabated. As there was no relief, he was taken to an Ayurvedic physician. This treatment was given for three weeks. Yet, there was no relief. So, allopathy, Ayurveda, over. Now, usually we keep saying like, when allopathy fails, naturopathy, naturopathy fails, homeopathy, homeopathy fails, tirupati. So likewise, he did not go to tirupati because homeopathy did not fail in between. When the patient approached a nearby homeopathy physician, he was given electrolytes and arsenic, bryonia, china, rostox in different potencies, ferrofar, plenty of doses, different potencies. Mixture, everything, big list. I will tell you one point here, it is little connected to this. When I was working as a cell professor and my guru, Dr. N. S. Prashansar was there as PG professor, one case came from homeopathic doctor carrying a notebook, Piles case. And he asked me one small homework, do it in 15 minutes. What are all the medicines given to this gentleman for Piles? When I have checked only names, not each drug in different potencies, not that, only different drugs, 64 drugs, even Lily also did not understand these many drugs would be there for piles as therapeutics. No repertory would give 64 drugs for piles. 64 drugs, believe me, no exaggeration, my friend Srinivas Reddy can also be contacted, he would vouch for it. So, because you can't contact Prashan Sari, he is there in heaven. So, this case, Prashan Sari looked at it and said, now no homeopathic medicine will work. I hope better you go for surgery and then you will get back the symptoms and problems again. Then you come back to me. Let us put an end to this menace through a mechanical intervention and then go for it. That's how with homeopathic drugs, it was damaged in such a way. What happened? There was slight relief with homeopathic drugs. Slight. Maybe that ferrofastic thing or some other drug we don't know. But later the fever returned with different pattern. What it used to be at such particular hour and with some characteristic features, everything got completely changed. The patient himself was telling some my Maha Gaya, Maha Kuch Nehua, Ayurveda Ke Paas Gaya, Maha Kuch Nehua, Omepat Ke Paas Gaya, Doctor Achcha Hai Sab Chota Hai, Lekin Achcha Hai, Thik Hai, Dabha Bhoot Diye, Bhoot Poo, Lete Lete Mujhe Laga, Ye Thik Ho Jaiwa, Ikko Dabhaiwa Le Ro, Ikko Doses Le Ro, Different Different Drugs Le Ro, Those Me Haan, Some Mother Teacher Was Also Given, I Don't Know What Mother Teacher Was, So Some Things Were Given, But उससे क्या हो रहा है साहब के अब मैं समझ नहीं सकता हूं मेरे बुखार कब आ रहा है कब जा रहा है और क्या हो रहा है दिस वाज द थिंग व्हाट डू यू थिंक ऑफ इट दिस पॉइंट देयर इज नो टाइम मोडलिटी एरोक्सिजंस कंप्लीटली चेंज्ड एपिटाइट कंप्लीटली लॉस्ट सीवियर कॉन्स्टिपेशन एंड इट वाज कॉजिंग पेन ऑफ डोमेन पेशेंट बिकेम वेरी वीक एंड नॉट टॉकिंग टू एनीवन Keeping silent all the time. So, what drug should be given? 
Can anybody? Sepia, sir. Fantastic. Good boy. So, fever changing pattern after abuse of homeo medicine, Sepia 2. This question was asked by Dr. GLN Shastri, sir, when I was taking interview for my NJH. He asked me, he, in fact, I, as a journalist or the representative of NJH, I should ask the questions. He was asking me the questions and I should answer the things. And then that time, the interview went on for six hours. And that was one best interview we published in our NJH. GLN Chastar, he was Dian of Homeopathy, great master prescriber, classical homeopath. He used to give one dose and one dose. That's it. And you have to break your head for him to give second dose. So that's how he asked me same question. Sepia. That's it. Next follow, he was much better. Appetite improved. Fever paroxysms reduced. Fortunate for me, I wouldn't have really thought that it has been damaged by homeopathic medicines had it not been associated with the symptoms of sepia, like the constipation, silence, all these things. So supported. So it was good for me. Selected, it was good. A bang on that target. The cell continued, you became completely all right. This is one such case which told that we can also spoil the cases. Don't ever think that homeopathy medicines will not produce side effects. They won't, but they will produce straight effects. This is the problem. No side effects, only straight effects. So this is what we have to be careful. Because anything, like for example, I like Tirupati Laddu. Doesn't mean that I eat three big Laddus. I can't. Even the food in excess can cause damage. So even the least harmful homeopathic medicine, if it is given in excess, can damage the course. And another case, 43-year-old gentleman, close family friend, fever since two days, with mild chills, severe day, as it being hammered, aggravation night, aggravation rest, extreme weakness, profuse sweat after taking paracetamol tablet. Nothing great. I mentioned here because it was mentioned by the patient. Take paracetamol, fever comes down. Pass of appetite, nice moderate, constipated since three days. Even when he has fever or headache, he keeps in his room by taking on mobile. Mobile, no? Mobile means we should mobile to talk on mobile. So that's what he was mentioning that he was doing it practically. He has, he carries two mobiles and uh, I wonder how he really make it two mobiles answering them clearly correctly. It would be difficult. Anyway, very nervous, anxious, hard working. We are all hardly working, but he is very hard working. Principled, affectionate, can't bear contradiction. So, Arsani Kamal 200. Too early, asked him to go for RT-PCR. That was the time, RT-PCR, RT-PCR, everybody, RT-PCR. Common, common test. That I did not mention in the investigations, which goes without saying, if it is a pandemic, anything whatever is important during that time, epidemic or pandemic, you have to take care. And the drug selection also, if it is an epidemic, genus epidemicus. It goes without saying. RT-PCR positive on 30th September 2020. HRCT test, Corax 4, confirming that also. So, when he came with the report, his fever, which was intermittent, not subsided. He was not feeling well. The wife and father told a peculiar symptom during fever. They were whispering in my ears. When he was attending on a phone in the clinic, emergency, so I said, okay, usually we don't allow the phones inside, but being a family friend, this is a headache. So he said, okay. Then they whispered in my ears, said he was scolding everyone in the house, even without any reason. This made me search repertory, and then I got ferrum metallicum, 202 hours. By night, fever subsided, and there was tremendous improvement at all levels. Yeah. Tremendous. At that time, at the peak, we were thinking it would take five days, six days, all that, nothing. 
in few hours he became all right so problem is with us we don't catch a characteristic feature we are deaf rt pcr negative that was 30th september 6th october it was negative when he became so all right i thought get it tested will it be so early it becomes negative he got it and i asked him to go for hrct test which he could not take it case number 5 now the case number 4 that tells us that if we select the right remedy the action stops immediately so the problem is with us in selecting the right remedy 16 year old girl mother is our family friend again retired chief engineer she was working under my father in law the girl was having continuous fever since two and a half months i think this case i discussed with dr vishpala earlier i never mentioned in any webinar but i discussed in person with her first started as an intermittent fever for five days aggravation at 2 pm later became continuous fever was associated with tremendous weakness loss of appetite constipation all the investigations were normal she was treated by none other than fever hospital superintendent we have fever hospital nowadays it is called as ronald ross uh, something institute of tropical medicine or something but everybody says it is quarantine hospital or fever hospital so initially started with anti malarial drugs common when the investigations are normal usually you start with anti malarial because we know in hyderabad itself that malarial uh, the ronald ross detected anyway as there was no relief fever became continuous it was intermittent became continuous with his malarial treatment then he started anti typhoid treatment some chloramphenicol if i remember well i'm not sure of the drug but chloramphenicol it could be even after weeks treatment the fever was still continuing he was a great prescriber some rare investigations were also conducted some of the things which i was teaching the students in my college in lecture those tests were also done usually we teach for academic interest we don't do it for all our patients then the doctor started akt anti cox treatment all four drugs at that time differently not in combination they were given she was becoming weaker day by day she was having vomiting loss of appetite and she said mommy mujhe jaldi maar dalo ye kya hai that's how she was telling in the clinic itself mai bardash nahi kar sakti hu then i became mar dalo mai mar jati hu ye sab dekh ke i said are very good we are great in selecting a remedy so i gave arsenic al 0 by 1 fourth hourly one pill absolutely no relief then it suddenly stuck to my mind i said withdraw all the medicines including placebo my assistant said let us give sl i said no sl even nothing i convinced the parents it took 20 minutes for me to convince the parents told them don't give any medicine no placebo nothing absolutely nothing all these days with so many medicines nothing happened without medicine nothing will happen so they got convinced having little faith in me they said Did you? Okay, did you? After 48 hours, fever started reducing. After three more days, the temperature touched normal. Girl was feeling much better. This is called as drug-induced fever, which would be maintained by the treatment. So, as Bernard Shaw writes in Doctor's Dilemma, in spite of your treatment, I became all right. So that's all. so sometimes not to give medicine better than to give this is very important we should bear in our mind right so there can be a drug induced fever and give some gap don't dump medicine after medicine medicine after medicine give gap at times it becomes all right beautifully described in harrison very nicely as i was teaching medicine so i stuck to my mind otherwise i would have also dumped with one or the other medicine immediately like that now another case not 15 it should be see. girl is 17 years 
fever since two months. Cox was the diagnosis. She was put on anti-Cox treatment. Fever recurring. Severe burning soles with pain. Has to be on the move less to symptom symptoms. Her father, big industrial or real estate giant, has, is a stinking rich man. So she kept two cars with three drivers. For her sake, they will be on the move. She used to eat food, sleep, only for important aspects she used to reach home. Otherwise, she is always in the car on the move. That's how it was. Typical highly restless. Irritable, BP, sharp, weak, clean. She has just finished her, I think, uh, dermatology PG. Now, at that time, she was in intermediate. Lack of appetite, does not cover, wants company. Thirst increased, constipated. The diagnosis was motor neuropathy of both legs, pulmonary cops, iron deficiency anemia, glossitis. We have given tuberculinum 10 m initially one dose. Did not hold it for some time. Then we gave 50 m. Then we gave C m. This is how the increased potency is till we reached C m. She was not completely all right. She became completely all right. Never required any medicine for any such conditions. The AKT continued was continued for its course. I did not intervene and I did not ask them to stop it. It was continued. But all her neuropathy symptoms came down, anemia improved, glossitis went off. So that's how she became completely all right. This is one such like a chronic type of condition where we need to take a breathing, including the constitution, the symptoms, everything, and the characteristic features. And we have given. Like as I'm talking about tuberculum CM, one case I told Dr. Vishpala earlier, we were discussing when she came to Hyderabad, like one girl was, um, she attempted suicide and she had all things. If you recollect Dr. Vishpala, I gave RM Metallicum tendon to that girl, thinking she is absolutely RM Metallicum. No improvement. She was scolding all that. All, all her pranks were continued. Then her, I gave her 50 M. No improvement. There was one week, two weeks gap only. Then I gave her RM Metallicum CM. She became so well, she came and locked it herself when she came to the clinic and she said, how did I behave that way? This is not like an introspection. Humipati brings out your own self and you can laugh at your own self, which was defective at that time. So that's what like CM, till we reach we can. Somebody might question, why didn't you give CM straight away? I didn't because I thought TM or 10M would be very conveniently right remedy, right potency, but did not work. Now, we'll brush through. I think probably we have uh, uh, come to the stage where we don't need to spend much time in the theory. But some of the things which we have to brush our memory, some common remedies, which I commonly use, I tell you here, in my practice, I tell you frankly, if I think a remedy, I give that remedy, if it is an acute condition, like for example, arsenic amalgam, arsenic amalgam 200, I give six doses to be taken, three hourly, four hourly, two hourly, depending on the intensity of the symptoms. And if I am a little doubtful, I need to give, I give arsenic amalgam bryonia with spacing of three hours at like two bottles, alternately, alternate three hours. So this is how I give in acute conditions of fevers. In one case, where swine flu was at its peak, and many people were dying in Hyderabad, I was taken to the hospital, I see a ventilator ward, and first time in my life, and I think probably last time, a pulmonologist came in front of me and said, you, so you are a homeopathic doctor, please come. So I was flabbergasted. So I said, okay, let me go. All that gown, mask, everything, I went in. There were 10 ventilator beds. Nine people already died in front of this lady. That lady's husband was working as RMO in a district headquarters hospital. 
and this man took me because it was declared she would die any moment i went there she was having all pipes everything connections mouth and everything that she was tied all the four limbs were tied to the bed at that time nothing else to extract i went there saw her so she was like through the eyes she was pleading me that's what i could understand she was pleading me almost like begging me telling me take me out not in words but in gestures that's how i could understand and came to the college because i went from the college i came to the college took arsenic amalgam 0 by 1 from our pharmacy gave it to that doctor said give it to early one kid kuch nahi hota hai already everything has done has been done and she is almost like having one foot in the grave whether i should push her or leave even if i leave her also she would fall into the grave so that's how whether i can pull her out and believe me in two days there was a lot of change we continued that with four hours gap and later on she became completely all right while going back to their varangal place they came home gave me one sweet box and said thank you but he said i plead you don't publish this case anyway because i am an allopathic doctor and i am i am a president in my district headquarter i lose all my respect i said the hell with you people forget it so that's how when we need to give frequently in an emergency in a very serious condition we give frequently then we are not sure i always keep telling my students as well or my assistants or my friends also if you are not sure of the drug we may probably give alternate drugs otherwise one drug one dose fantastic it can work if you are 100% sure when we are not sure there is a problem and if i am sure but i need to repeat it i give it in same drug in different level potency that's what we keep doing it here are some of the common drugs which i commonly use like aconite not so commonly but very i will tell you one example one lady teacher in a school adjacent to my clinic she was going on scooter as a pillion rider husband was driving at a traffic junction the scooter was stopped and then suddenly with all that band baja barat some dab 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 without any the rhythm or anything so a dead body was being carried by her side <clears throat> you know heard that band in front of dead body will not have any rhythm or anything so dab 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 something so so that's how it the moment she saw the dead body she got frightened this story she did not tell me she developed a severe fever high fever in the night she was given paracetamol as usual like somebody was telling dolo 650 is the most consumed thing in india during pandemic could be so at that time he was she was given and the fever did not subside next day doctor was seen he gave some antibiotic three days lapsed fever did not subside then she she and our family members they are all my patients they came at that time then she she did not explain to me exactly what happened so i took the whole case and gave some remedy next day evening the husband gave her in and said sir no relief when i asked what is the problem how did it start you did not tell anything when he said sir i suddenly remember this is important for you because they know some fundamentals of homeopathy some like that. they read books of so he said sir this is how it happened so i gave i collect 201 dose this is sell eight doses two early one dose one dose only because i was very sure and believe me next day morning temperature was normal the lady became all right one more day left she came to the school and attended all her duty so aconite is very important but it is difficult for us to catch it very important one more case i tell you aconite not with fever but one gentleman came with severe renal colic patient with renal colic here right side renal colic he kept and said doctor sir mere paas sirf 15 minute ka time hai 15 minute mein aap dawa deke kam kar diye to theek hai main jinda rehta hu nahi to main marne wala hu ye darad itna shiddat se darad hai main mar jaau I said, wait. It might take five minutes only. I gave Akhilai two drops on his tongue, and he became all. That's why he said, I he is going to die in fifteen minutes. 
So we need to catch this expression from the patients. Accolade is such, if it is correct, it will act in minutes. Then of course, arsenic amalgam, my pet drug, without arsenic it will be difficult. If somebody withdraws arsenic from my clinical uh, pharmacy, probably I would close down my clinic. High temperature, endagonic means weak, low grade, septic fever, intermittent, anything, hay fever, cold sweats, typhoid, but not too early. That's how they say like Rostock or Nexol, some drugs, Bryonia, you give. Uh, in earlier stages of typhoid, later arsenic, Baptisha, those, those drugs, Arnica, those drugs will come into picture in typhoid. Delirium and great restlessness, great hate also. And Bryonia, best remedy in this season. We go to a movie, triple R movie, we went in, had that icy atmosphere, come out, suddenly hot. You develop headache, bryonia. You develop fever, bryonia. Beautiful. So increase the thirst, and he wants to take complete rest. Body aches. The nuts, Monica, fever with shivering or chills. He might want to remain covered all the time. And gastric symptoms and irritability common. Then severe chills from the back, thirstlessness. But they will suffer with dizziness, weakness, and all. Then the stocks, bone, uh, muscle pain, and he wants to be on the move, restless. So that's all. And causation could be waiting uh, in the rain. Then we have drugs. Whether you take Baptisia. Baptisia has got even that tremendous offensive order results. Kent writes beautifully, he was called to see a patient and he says, I can't forget that visit. The moment I entered into the patient's chamber in room, I could not tolerate that smell. So that's how offensive nature is also very important in the patients. Then of course, later more, chill between 9 and 11 a.m. Heat, violent thirst, increases with fever, fever blisters, hydremia, constipation, weakness, loss of appetite. Ventramur was my drug, which put an end to my malarial episodes. Then there are quite a lot of single drug rubrics. Just to scan through, I'll show you without wasting much time. It will take another three, four minutes. The, these drugs, these rubrics, go through once, all of you, my friends. They will tell you that these cases would come to you, definitely. Like fever accompanied by migraine or acid sublimation, fever in AIDS. I have got lots of thousands and thousands of cases of AIDS. Many patients do suffer with fever. And commonly drugs would help. But in few cases I have seen fever was not coming down. And carcinosin, one M, one dose, puts an end to the fever in most of the cases. Then I may follow it with other remedy, which I have been giving it later, or I may give a cell. Depends on the viral load and CD4 count also. Very important. And fever, beer drinking amelioration, very drop. That's what like my friend was given. And fever disappearing suddenly. If it suddenly snaps, and Tuja is the beautiful remedy. Hello. Hello. Body upper part different and lower part, the temperature distribution, as I already said, like heat stage, chill stage, sweat stage, any characteristic features during those stages would go a long way in getting a correct assembly. Then, of course, cataract fever, menses curing, the fight is a remedy. In one case, I have given bryonia, there was a headache also during fever. But graphite helped me in that case. Bryonia is a hot remedy. Graphite is a chilly remedy. I ignore both because he did not show any great points towards that. But this single drug, this single drug rubric helped me in one such case. Then this we have already seen in a case, changing paroxysms after abuse of homeopathic medicines. If paroxysms are changing, in their own, from the beginning. So pulsatilla, we know the changeability. Pulsatilla, no parallel to pulsatilla. If pulsatilla fails, they're well indicated. Carcinosin is the remedy. So we have to keep in our mind. 
So here, if you see few rubies like chili accent at particular hour, then it could be chill with shaking, sekyalka, chill with uncovering, tuberculinum, chilliness at 9 30 hours, then drinking coffee amelioration, arsenic amalva. So any Tamilian would be very happy drinking coffee. Vishkala would tell, tell, us, tell us that she is half Tamil and Rama is also there. Chilliness with sleep during borax. Okay. Then after diarrhea, there is fever. Usually during diarrhea, there may be fever. Cholibacillin is a remedy. But in most of the cases, I have given arsenic amal. It never let me down. But I have seen one single drug rubric. But uh, I never gave cholibacillin, to be frank with you. So diarrhea after, if there is fever, arsenic. Then uh, dry heat, afternoon sleep during alumina, so dry heat night on motion, bryonia. Then dry heat night is sweats, dry heat after coition. Here I should tell you, one of my cousins, she got married a little late. He used to come to me for this problem. Like so many symptoms, but he used to tell, the moment I had intercourse, next day I am having fever. So please treat. Many, many drugs, depending on various other symptoms. But here I miss this rubric for quite some time. Really, I admit here. One fine day I was just going through, and then suddenly it stuck to my mind. And when I have looked back, I miss quite a lot of symptoms of Naxonka in that patient. I'm not traveling from drug to the patient. As our Kishore Mehta used to tell, don't travel from drug to patient. Travel from patient to drug. So that, of course, I did not travel properly. So I took a reverse journey and I landed in a perfect way. So Naxvanaka put him into his fever, but his treatment for infertility is still continuing. So that's how Naxvanaka helps in those cases. During gangrene, if there is fever, but Fever from fright, chenopodium, is an, an education to me. I have given aconite in that lady. I have not given chenopodium. Usually I give chenopodium for ear problems, but I have not given to that. Okay. Fever, heat radiating, variolinum. Fever, hemorrhage, amelioration, melanoma. So that's why in Ayurveda, leeches, bleeding, if the fever comes down, melanoma could be. After abuse of ice water, in one case I have given, earlier if few people remember, for marriages in our places at least, they not, may not be in Bombay, they used to keep drums of water and put huge of blocks of ice into it for any big functions like marriage functions and all. And from there, jugs of water being taken and put into glasses and people used to drink. We also drank several times. I put into that drinking that water after I read an article and came to know very closely that many ice blocks come from mortuary. So we can imagine what could be the fate. So they keep ice blocks for the dead bodies to be kept on and they do the dissection and all that, that post-mortem. So that those ice blocks, they used to sell it, crooked fellows. So that's how, that's one. Then many people used to get throat infection often. But here in one case, when the child, eight-year-old child, our own niece's son, developed a severe fever after that, and I have not given, in fact, my teacher gave Carbovage. I asked what could be. Carbovage would be the best drug. Would have read thoroughly, but when I was seeing this rubric, it reminded me of my teacher. He gave carbovate for the fever after abuse of ice water. Then intense heat during meningitis, epis malefica. Epis is one of the best medicines for meningitis anyway. Intense heat followed by prostration, camphor. Internal heat afternoon graphites. Internal heat to be chilliness graphites. Then operation after master operation if there is fever, capsicum is the remedy. Beautiful. Then paroxysmal afternoon. Then stooping coldness when rising from Merkar, stages, first stages, in earlier stages of fever, Tarampas is a beautiful remedy. Sour food aggravation, lacrosis. 
then typhoid resistant to typhoid streptomycin i give typhoid in them in these cases if there is resistant but streptomycin is a totopathic remedy good and if there is fever after vaccination in many cases after this corona vaccination covid vaccination i have given carcinosin to many of my patients their fever subsided it could be tuja it could be antimtot it could be arsenic it could be many drugs silica is also there many drugs are there but i have given carcinosin to many patients also any questions you can put it on chat box and i think that a day will be born by dr rushali okay so thank you very much i thank our ngh whole team led by vishpala and all the people and uh, if there are any points to be added from general medicine point of view i think we may have a lecture by dr asani who is a master in such type of descriptions so thank you very much and if there are any questions i would ha be happy to explain if i know that thank you dr praveen uh, i would like to add my two bits here thank you that's what i said without seeing you <laughs> about uh, pyrexia of unknown origin or a fever of unknown origin right participants this definition was given in 1961 right sir when uh, we did not have so many investigative modalities available mm. so then now you know any patient to wait for 3 weeks before being labeled is just not possible absolutely absolutely first thing you have to make sure that there are at least three readings demonstrable of 101 fever or more three occasions because many a times patient keep saying they have fever 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 but they actually don't have fever they don't we do three it the term puo is divided into four types one is classic yes sir you should worry that after two to three visits to you in the opd if you cannot diagnose after doing due diligence investigations then you start thinking of puo or four days hospitalized patient after investigated a patient who gets admitted in fe hospital without fever but gets fever within 24 hours and lasts for more than 24 hours it will be called as a nosocomial infection hospital based and if the patient is hiv or if the patient is on chemotherapy then it's a neutropenic fever so you have to arrive at a conclusion and give empirical treatment within 3 to 4 days time then when you are looking at fever one thing i have seen that most doctors make a mistake they only keep checking temperature they don't check other parameters okay. never miss that a fever can turn sepsis can turn into major organ dysfunction like acute renal failure acute respiratory distress syndrome or cardiovascular shock so all fever patients do not give online consultation call them to clinic every day or every other day and check blood pressure a systolic blood pressure below 90 should send you running because this patient is in septic shock so understand that sepsis is something which may not give fever don't keep thinking that this is acute which will give fever which may, may not give you any diagnosis other than you know we don't do procalcitonin as a routine test so keep in mind that this patient could be either sepsis or systemic inflammatory respiratory syndrome sirs which we have seen plenty in covid now so always have due diligence and a high index of suspicion otherwise the relatives will come and tell you tell you after patient's death doctor did you not understand that this was critical <laughs> always have a high index of suspicion thank you very much i sh i should say thank you very much no not at all sir you gave a wonderful talk thank you thank you
So it's my habit. I can't keep quiet. So I had to give something. You should not. In fact, I was concluding anything more. I we need a special lecture from Dr. Asani, and rightly so you said. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pravin sir, and thank you so much, Asrani sir, for uh, you know having that habit of not keeping quiet. I think it's it always helps us. Sir, it was a wonderful talk, and um, the way you spoke and the way you shared all those insights, all those things actually happen to us in our clinic in everyday practice. So you have helped us not only with identifying the remedy, but how to manage it on an everyday basis. So there are some questions, sir, in the chat box. I'll ask you. Um, um, so, which is the best repertory to refer for fevers? I refer Robin Murphy. Okay. Given by NJH. Given by NJH, yes. Free. Robin Murphy. <laughs> That's wonderful. Okay. If anybody wants free. Robin Murphy, they should become life member. And why not, sir? I will uh, take this opportunity and share something right now. Um, just give me a minute. We have a fantastic offer for uh, becoming life member. Somebody has been very kind and has donated a lot of money to us. And as we are true to engage spirit. We don't keep it for ourselves, but um, we share it with our uh, life members. The whatever discount, whatever money we have received, Pros we give it as a discount. Prospective okay. life members. Okay. Yes, prospective life members. Absolutely. So if you are so far still not a life member, I think um, this would be a great opportunity because we are giving a 30% off for all the new life members. If you are a doctor, it is 7,000. And if you are a student, it is 6,000. Get in touch with Munira. I think uh, those who know NJH, everyone knows. Sorry, so, Gurushali, one small correction, uh, uh, clarification. Yes. 30% on 7,000, sir, after, after No, 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 no. We uh, currently life membership is at 10,000. You should and, not should mention because I yes. think 10,000 and then 30 percent. Yes, yes. You're absolutely right, sir. We will get that correction done. I hope mm. Fatima is listening to this because Fatima looks after all these things. So, mm. yes, 10,000 is the life membership and after discount, it is coming to 7,000 and 6,000. Okay. So, it is written new life membership is at it. So, it means if we write too many things, people you know, lose the thing. So this is what it is. I know. And ma'am, how long are we offering this? So actually we've, we've 25 people out of which okay. we've already got about 12 or 13. So only few are left. So please, uh, yeah, do it fast. So yes. it is only till this, uh, this uh, amount lasts. Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right. Questions, Rushali? Yes, sir. Any more questions? Yes, there are, there are questions. Um, Can I, before that, just share one or two things? Yeah. Yes, ma'am, please. Yeah, so, you know, I just want to add that sometimes even a remedy which is not fever prone, not known to be fever, but if the symptoms are like that, just last week I had a case where the patient's cough was not going with Brianna and you know, she was coughing all the time. Then I asked her more details of the cough and she said, as soon as I lie down, now we all know as soon as head touches the uh, pillow and then you get cough and you have to sit up, which is the remedy. So, yeah. So, and the face turn, then we confirm with face turns red. And just because it has fever, we should not think that we can't give Drosera. And we're giving a few doses of Drosera. Next day, she said, oh, I'm much better. I didn't cough whole day. At night now, it is only one or two coughs. So what I'm saying is, if the remedy is indicated, even if you think it is a very deep acting and it fever won't, but it will still come. I had another case uh, where uh, the mothers, you know, it is a very peculiar case. I'm actually treating her for uh, for a lung cancer, which uh, for a cancer which has spread. And uh, she said she had cough, 
too much cough and with fever and she feels very exhausted and all that. And then I had already decided the remedy because she says she's very tired. She has involuntary urination. But the best part she told me is that, you know, uh, my son told me I got some good news. I told her, congratulations, your daughter's got pregnant. We had just given her medicine and she's pregnant. So uh, she said, yes, I know, but I told her to be careful and all that. So my son said that even when you get good news, you are, you know, so worried. So, uh, so I just confirmed the sympathetic anxiety with for loved ones, which is her thing. And again, causticum fitted there. So that is how that medicine confirmed that it is causticum. So what I'm saying is fever is there, normally you don't give the remedy. But think if the symptom is so strong that yes, that remedy will work. I just wanted to give a few very recent examples. Thank you. One point, Dr. Rushani, as I was telling about Drosira, I will give one, one of my experiences. In one case of, of fever for quite some time, maybe three weeks, then <clears throat> accidentally I touched on the neck and I could feel lymph nodes, cervical lymphadenitis. I told to go for investigation. Then it was showed as Cox lymphadenitis. Okay. Then I took two or three characteristic features and the diagnosis. I gave Drosera. Drosera is one of the best remedies for axillary lymphadenitis. Cox especially. And I have one case of Drosera, which is actually, you know, unbelievable. We still can't believe. Uh, why, how she's improving. So she had spleen. She's come to us three, four years ago and they told her splenectomy and her hemoglobin was very low and everything was uh, off and we selected for uh, her drosera. Actually, it's an old case, so I don't remember exactly. And, uh, and she's doing well on drosera. And every time we move away and from that, then her hemoglobin falls and we go back to it once a week, once in two weeks. You know, Drosera, we say don't repeat too often, but here we cannot stop it. And since she's doing well and her platelets come up and her hemoglobin comes up and her spleen is still intact, we are continuing with Drosera. It's a very, very good case. Fantastic. Thank you so much, ma'am. It's a great insight that we should never, never miss the PQRS and pick it up and run with it. Never uh, miss finding that concomitant or maybe a prominent symptom. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, sir, there is one more question. Mm. Uh, Dr. Nad want to ask, uh, uh, sir, in the case, though fever is since two days, you have considered mental constitution for prescription. Where that, uh, Why is that, sir? PCR. RT-PCR positive. Hmm. Because clearly, I have, I have checked only that characteristic symptom PQR is not just mental, it is associated with mental, uh, the physical uh, the symptom, fever, with that type of irritability. So there I have tested, not that like mental totality I have taken and then tested. It was a characteristic PQR symptom for that particular condition at that time. That abusive one, right? That yes. Wonderful. And um, yes, Dr. Jayesh Sangvi has written a lot of praises for you, sir. I'll pass it on to you. He's just and... your best friend, huh, Praveen. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jayesh. How are you? <laughs> Jayesh Bhai, you have been there in marathon. Yeah, good, good. Hi. Hi. Always wonderful to see, you know, uh, Praveen too. Hey. And Dr. Vishwala is always like a young person. From the time I met her, maybe 12, 15 years back. She is younger than the same. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Jayesh, sir, we wanted to tell you that, you know, um, not only your friend, Dr. Praveen Kumar, sir, but all our other speakers are also fantastic. So I want to see you next time when, you know, other <laughs> webinars are there. Sir, Rama has always been forwarding me all the details every time. I appreciate it. Good evening, sir. Good evening. 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 Good evening.
Thermally wants to the... ask thermoregulation, thermal state, and fever, the relationship. That's a fantastic question. You want relationship. Thermoregulation is done by hypothalamus to keep our body at a particular temperature. Normal, good for the whole body. Thermal state is the condition of our body, state of our body, where we either react or receive the, or respond to particular thermal changes or atmosphere, in the atmosphere. And what is the other thing? Thermal? Third question? Means what, what is happening in most of the cases when we are taking and we are trying to locate the thermal state of the patient in acute also, that yeah. time fever cases, there is the confusion whether it is chilly or hot. So patient is also not able to, he, he will tell, I am feeling some hot or I am feeling some chill like this. But, uh, but uh, thermal state is difficult to elicit. Yes, I understand Dr. Vidyagar. Here I tell you actually, the basic fundamental point which has been clearly mentioned in our organon itself, that during these important stages of chill, heat and sweating, you take any factor associated with it. Don't just brush it as chill before fever. If the chill comes after fever, then it is characteristic. If the chill is absent before fever in the malaria or intermittent, it is characteristic. So take it out, chill starts at 11 a.m. It is characteristic. So that's what like Hanuman mentioned very clearly in Arganan. So don't bother about his thermal state. Now we are erecting an acute totality in fever, especially in an acute condition. Yeah, so yeah, they yeah. To take these three stages and erect the totality depending on the characteristic features associated with these stages and any mental or physical conditions associated with these Sages, if the fellow is very angry, like somebody was asking me the question. Similarly, even two days fever, but he was becoming irritable. It's an associated symptom during fever. So that's all. I'm not taking his mental state into cognizance. I'm taking his mental associated symptom. Similarly, thermal state also. You don't need to break your head if the fellow does not reveal you exactly his thermal state. But if he is able to tell you what is his chill condition, chill stage, fever stage, and sweating stage, enough, you will get a lot of information. And he would himself pour out his other associated phenomena. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Also, sir, if I, if I may add, yeah. we right. should be more concerned and more focused if there is a shift in the thermal. Fantastic. That would give more value to our prescription. Yes. Right. Fantastic. So, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. The, those are all the questions. And I think the, um, very nicely put forward by you that we should have one more session uh, by Dr. Asrani, sir, yes. on managing fevers and understanding fevers per se. You have given the homeopathic perspective. Uh, he can throw a lot of light on clinical and diagnostic perspective. So maybe we will come back with that uh, session in the near future. Round table on that, then he would throw more light on that. We round can... table. I would. I would prefer a webinar from him, wherein that... you know he gives a complete, precise, complete understanding, and huh? then maybe we can uh, share our experiences in the round table. Correct. That's true. So again, to remind all our audience that we are having the roundtable every fourth Saturday, wherein four of our EBs come together and we brainstorm on a single topic, how we are handling it and we share cases. It's a very impromptu kind of a conversation, but with a lot of insights and it has become quite famous and people are uh, really uh, enjoying those roundtables. Uh, we do Facebook Live with that. And our uh, YouTube is getting sorted. We are going to uh, have these webinars put on the YouTube very soon. And um, yes, a lot of people have been asking us about the recordings. So very soon you're going to get all the recordings. So continue, join with us, become a subscriber, become a life member, come to our editorial board. And you know, if you are ready to spread homeopathy, if you're ready to share your knowledge you are most welcome to join us we definitely are in need of also say that 
you can become very famous by writing in the NGH. Absolutely, absolutely. Very you good become, cases. You you become published author the moment you publish a case in NGH, and it, NGH is loved by all the homeopaths. Ma'am, I remember a couple of years back when I had gone to Indore. They had um, uh, no, not Indore, Bhopal. In that college, the students used to organize CME and they would read cases from NJH and they would discuss that and that is how their knowledge was getting enhanced. Any colleges so, do that wherever sometimes I yes. go, they say that, yeah. Yes, so it's okay. a fantastic platform. So uh, I would invite everyone to you know write an article at least once. Once a year, you should publish an article with NJH. We come up with fantastic themes. And the theme for next month is remedy relationship. Uh, it's a beautiful topic. We all struggle with so many things. So if you a share. Beautiful and difficult topic. Yeah. yeah. If you have a fantastic um, case, just share it with us and we would be very happy to publish it. Yeah. Um, so that's about it for today. Should we sign off, sir? Is yes. Thank you so yeah. much, Dr. Praveen, was, Dr. Vishali. It was very okay. nice interactive session and everybody enjoyed it. A lot of people have stayed right till the end. So we yes. are very happy Absolutely. about that. Okay. Absolutely. So uh, friends, do join us for the round table coming up uh, on the fourth Saturday and join our Telegram group, subscribe to YouTube, uh, keep watching our round tables on Facebook and just stay with us. A very, very happy Hanuman Day to you all in advance. Thank you. Bye. Good night.